Hey everyone, and welcome back to the galaxy. Today we will be learning how to use the rectangle and ellipse select tools. Both tools have the exact same options, except for one extra option on the rectangle select, rounded corners. The Select tools allow you to create selections in your project. To use these tools, first select one in your toolbox. I will select the Rectangle tool and click and drag onto my project. Once you release your mouse, the selection will become active. After you've created a selection, you can edit its size by dragging any of the four corners, or placing your mouse in the center and dragging. After clicking Enter or switching to another tool, the editing matrix disappears. To regain control, simply reselect the Select tool that corresponds with the shape and select within the selection. Now, let's look at some of the tool options. At the top, we have a Mode option with four different icons. These influence how the selection will behave with other selections already in your project. The first icon, Replace the current selection, will erase any previous selection as you draw a new one with this tool. The second icon, Add to the current selection, will continually add new selections you draw out to previous ones that are active. The third icon, Subtract from the current selection, will subtract new selections you draw out from the previous ones that are active. And finally, the fourth icon, Intersect with the current selection. This will encase any previous selection within the new selection that you draw out. Note that as you create custom selections that deviate from a simple rectangle or ellipse, you will no longer be able to edit them with the corresponding tool. Instead, you will use the Move tool to reposition and the Transform tools to resize, rotate, etc. Now let's look at some other options for these tools. I recommend that you always leave anti-aliasing checked as it smooths out the edges of your selection. Selecting Feather Edges creates a softer edge, and you can change the severity of the feather with this sliding bar. You can best see the feather if I drag out a selection and then fill it with the Bucket tool. By selecting Rounded Corners, we gain access to this radius slider. If I draw out a selection, you can see these small rounded corners. As we adjust this slider, we can notice these corners getting more severely rounded. If we click Expand from Center, our selection will be created from the center instead of the corner we are dragging from. You can set rules for the behavior of selections by ticking the box Next to Fixed. If we click this drop-down, there are four options, Aspect Ratio, Width, Height, and Size. By keeping this selected to Aspect Ratio, I can input a new ratio in this box right below. I will type in 2 to 1. Now, the length will always be 2 times the height. And you can change the orientation of this aspect ratio quickly by selecting either the landscape or portrait modes. Keep in mind that the first number corresponds to the width, while the second number corresponds to the height. If we select Width, a numerical value appears below and we can define what we want the fixed width to be. All other options in this drop-down operate in a similar way. 
Moving further down, we have options for position and size. Notice how these numbers change as I move my selection around or change its size. You can use these to learn more about the attributes of your selection, or fine-tune its appearance and placement in your project. Directly below these options, we have a tick box titled Highlight. Clicking this creates a contrast between what is in your selection and what is outside. With the slider bar, we can adjust the opacity of the outside contrast so we can focus on the inside of our selection. Below the highlight is a drop-down titled No Guides. If we select this, we are presented with more options. By selecting any of these options, different styles of guides will be displayed within our selection. Notice how they conform to the selection as we move and resize it. Finally, we have an option called Auto Shrink with a tick box titled Shrink Merged. What this option does is detects the edge of an element in your project and shrinks the selection around it. While this doesn't work perfectly every time, it can be helpful for lining up selections perfectly around an image or element. Before we click Auto Shrink, I'm going to make the layer that I want the selection to conform around active by clicking it. Then I'm going to draw a general selection on the canvas. Then by selecting Auto Shrink, it looks at the active layer and analyzes it for shrinking the selection. But note that this algorithm isn't always perfect. As you can see, it doesn't shrink around the image. But when I extend the selection and make the shape layer active and click Auto Shrink, it correctly shrinks around the shape. With Shrink Merge selected, this option looks at all layers in the project and shrinks around the edges. So I'm going to bring this selection up around all these elements. Make sure Shrink Merged is selected and then click Auto Shrink. And now it sees these edges of the photos and this element. And that's it. You now know how to use the selection tools to their full potential. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you did, consider subscribing for more awesome content. Let us know if you found this tutorial helpful by liking this video and leaving us a comment. Thanks for watching.